Welcome everybody to How Fast Will It Go, and today we're dealing with the 2011 Ferrari FF. Now this has 1,191 horsepower, 623 pounds feet of torque from a 6 litre twin turbocharged V12 engine. The car itself already came with all wheel drive and it still has it, and it now weighs 3,102 pounds. And it can now do not 16 2.503 seconds and not 104.5. 1.7 seconds, so uh, yeah, uh, this is probably going to be one of the last of these kind of more predictable kind of cars to be on this series, because yeah, you expect a car like this to be able to do 240, 250 miles an hour, but I'm going to start looking at uh, cars that you might not expect to even be able to do 200 miles an hour in the future, but for now, let's see what this Ferrari can do. Now this change has come about because this game is now... Uh, uh, being stepped back in terms of support from uh, the developers because Forza Horizon 5 is on its way so uh, yeah that means there's going to be less for me to do on this so I figured instead of you know going for the usual uh, supercars that do around the same kind of speeds we'll uh, check out the uh, less you know kind of suitable kind of cars but regardless we're doing 230 now in this not got that much torque it does still weigh a lot so I'm not expecting this to be Rapid to be honest, 245. It's 250. Oh, did not see the mini there. Yeah, we managed 250, so uh, there is that. Yeah, far from the fastest Ferrari that we've had so far in the series. just not really got that one uh, enough torque not only just to uh, go at the kind of speeds you want it to but also deal with the still sizable weight and still sizable body yeah this is far from a lightweight Ferrari I think I'm right in saying it's the heaviest car in stock form so uh, yeah it's quite a uh, weighty beast this is to be honest, I'm not a massive fan of this car at all, really. I know some people are because, you know, it's a shooting brake uh, style of body and uh, Ferrari really haven't done many of them before, so, uh, yeah, that's why people some like uh, some people like it, but it's far too heavy for me and, uh, yeah, it's got an unnecessarily complicated all-wheel drive system because if you watch that Top Gear episode, it uh, switches into rear-wheel drive only at a certain rate of speed, so uh, or in a certain gear, so yeah, it doesn't really do anything for me in a lot of ways, but we're managing 250 for some now. It's got up to nearly that speed again on this side of the motorway. So, yeah, it's far from the slowest vehicle that we've had, but it's also one of the least impressive, because yeah, it's not that rapid, it's not that great in terms of handling, it's sliding all over the place. And uh, yeah, it's really rather sluggish getting up to the kind of speed that you want it to. Compare other cars that have around this kind of power, you know, about 1200 horsepower, and they're a lot, a lot sharpish uh, and a lot of, uh, better in terms of handling as well. So yeah, there we go, 250 miles an hour. Not the uh, best uh, top speed that we've had, but far from the worst as well. But yeah, at the end of the day, like I said, we are going to be uh, switching it up on this game. We're going to be looking at more unusual vehicles that you wouldn't expect to uh, be quick or, you know, even be able to do 200 miles an hour. So uh, yeah, we managed to match the Maserati 300S and the Aston Martin Vantage. We've beaten the Mitsubishi GTO, Porsche 356A, Aston Martin Vanquish is a Gato Coupe and the Aston Martin DBR1, but we are far behind the likes of the Celine S5S Raptor and the Alfa Romeo Geely Quadrifoglio. And you compare it to the likes of a GTC4 Lusso, also from Ferrari, which is the similar kind of shape and similar kinds of weight to this, and that managed 256 miles an hour. So, uh, yeah, overall, a big disappointment in terms of other Ferraris, but still, it's far from the slowest that we've had, so uh, there is that. But again, like I said, we are going to be looking at more unusual vehicles. I think the likes of the uh, Triumph TR6 that we tried a while back, and the uh, current slowest car that we've had on this series, which is the Austin Healey 3000 Mark III, which, despite being the slowest car on this series, still managed 239 miles an hour, despite being you know, from the mid-60s, not being even a car that had, you know, 200 horsepower originally, so, uh, yeah, that was still a surprise that that managed that amount of speed, but, 
yeah, we're definitely going to be looking at more cars like that that you really wouldn't expect to be able to do anything like 200 miles an hour. But nonetheless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.